about earlier. Um, so what I'm going to do is power paint four spots along the midline of the stomach um, and then we'll do a couple of other things with that. You understand everything? Yeah. Any questions? Yeah. You have to proceed? Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just bend your knees up here with your arms by your side. Cool. So just relax for me. Awesome. Okay, so I'm just going to check how your abdominal muscles are. I should just get a bounce back when I just palpate them. Great. Cool. So now what I'm going to get you to do is put your hands on your thighs for me, please. And what I'm going to get you to do is lift your shoulders and head off the plate. And I'm going to do the same thing, palpation down the midline. Okay, so and lift. And lift, and lift, and lift. Perfect. Okay. So now we're going to do the same thing. But do you remember um, when I told you about contracting your pelvic floor and your transverse abdominis? Mm -hmm. Do you remember how to do that one? Yeah. Cool. So I want you to do that as well as lifting. Okay. And I'll cue each time. Okay. Pelvic floor, TA, and lift. Pelvic floor, TA, and lift. Pelvic floor, TA, and lift. Pelvic floor TA and lift. Well done. Okay, so now we're going to do an assessment of your transverse abdominis. So this is your deepest abdominal muscle. Basically runs just this way. It comes from your lower ribs to the top of your pelvis um, and it just wraps around. So what, it, what the function is, is that it actually stabilizes your back and your pelvis during movement. Um, another important um, function is that it actually works with your pelvic floor to maintain intra-abdominal pressure um, along with your diaphragm and the rest of your abdominals. Um, what, what can happen is really common to happen during pregnancy is that they act, it actually weakens um, and I suspect, suspect that for you. Um, I'm just going to be palpating to see and see if you can contract that muscle today. So just in from your hip bones. And what I'm going to tell you to do is just bring your hip bones together and try to bring your belly button to the floor. Um, but I will help you with cues if you are struggling a little bit. Um, are you okay with that and happy to go ahead? Perfect. Okay, so I'm just going to be placing my hands just on your hip bones here. Perfect. Okay, so do you remember those cues? Mm -hmm. Okay, so bring them together. Perfect. Well done. Okay, relax for me. Okay, we'll try that one more time. Awesome, and relax. So can you feel my thumbs coming inwards a little bit? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I'm just gonna test that, um, and I'm gonna challenge it a little bit. We're gonna do the exact same thing, but try to do three deep breaths. Okay, ready, set, so contract, and three deep breaths. Good job, maintain that. Good job. Awesome, and relax, well done. Okay, so this is super fit. I'm just gonna be telling you a bit about your pelvic floor muscles today. Um, they play a really big role in lots of different things, especially during your exercise. So I'm just gonna educate you a bit on them. So basically, they're like a sling. They're a group of muscles at the base of your pelvis. Um, you can just see here, they're sitting right at the bottom there. Yep. Um, and they, so just visually as well, they sit just below here. Okay. Um, so basically, they do a different, couple of different things. They have some passages going through them. Mm -hmm. um, that includes your um, uterine passage and also your bowels. Mm -hmm. If you just scroll down a little bit, I'll show you what I mean. Oh, yeah? Yep, yeah, so you can see that. It goes mm -hmm. straight through there. So as you can see, the first function is that they control bowel bladder. So if you do have a weak pelvic floor, that can release the tension from your urethra and also your um, bowels. Mm -hmm. That means you can get a bit of incontinence problems, which I know that you have been struggling with at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, another one is that it has a sexual function and sensation. Um, so basically, if you do have a weak pelvic floor or if this is a bit of dysfunction there, you may feel a bit of pain or a bit of different sensation or, or no sensation at all during sex. Mm -hmm. um, also the next one, it also supports your internal organs, as you can imagine there's a lot of pressure inside your stomach, a lot of different organs, um, so when you do have a weak base, that could mean that you could get a prolapse or something coming out that you don't really want to come out, um, which I know that you have been experiencing. Mm -hmm. um, and then next it's also, there's a major, major um, function which is pregnancy and childbirth. So obviously with your contractions and then holding the baby in as well. Um, I know that you have experienced a tear there in the past, so obviously strengthening those muscles would be really great. 
And then also it's a part of the core cylinder that I was talking about before, so along with your diaphragm, abdominals, and pelvic floor. Um, it really controls the pressure with inside there. Um, so if that's not, you know, doing what it should be doing, you can experience all these different functions as well. Okay, so Mr. Superfit, I'm just going to run you through some bowel and bladder habits. Um, so at the moment, if you're drinking about three to four litres of water, I really want you to decrease that about two to three litres while you're breastfeeding. Breastfeeding, and then later on, um, take it down to about 1.5 to about two litres. Mm -hmm. Um, also with that, I know you're drinking four cups of coffee, but I really want you to try to decrease that one. Mm -hmm. um, it'll really help you with your stress urinary incontinence um, that you're experiencing at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, also on that note, I know that you've been um, emptying your bladder when it's really, really full, uh, which can really lead to some um, weakening of your pelvic floor muscles. So I want you to try to use your bladder diary to write down about every time that you go to the toilet, maybe set a time on your phone to go two to three hours a day, so that takes you to about seven to 10 voids per day. Okay. Um, I really don't want you to do that at night. So try to get to about zero or one times at night. Um, let's really try to decrease that, because I know you're going about two to three times. Um, and try not to hover when you're going to the toilet as well, because that really tenses up your pelvic floor muscles and restricts the flow. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so yeah, other than that, we've also got your bowels. So I know that you're experiencing some constipation at the moment. What I want you to make sure you're doing is you're not straining your muscles. So please just go when you really do feel the urge. Um, and then if you do feel that urge, answer that call. But I don't want you to try to strain your muscles. Um, so to help with that, we're going to make sure that you have a bit more soluble fibre in your diet. Because I know you're on a low carb diet at the moment. So we're really going to increase that. Um, if there is um, difficulties with that just from changing your diet alone, um, I will give you a GP referral and we can see if they need some laxative or other things if needed, but we'll try all these other things first. Um, also, when you're going to the toilet to just help out and re um, reduce that straining, we're going to use the squatty potty. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's just sitting on the toilet, your feet up on a box, knees up above your hips and leaning forward and you'll find that really help you. Um, cool, but yeah, so I've got a panther for you. Um, basically, it's got all this information in there and also the pelvic floor muscle um, information that I told you earlier. Cool. Okay, so this is super fit. Generally, I just want you to be doing um, 150 minutes of exercise a week, which I know you're achieving, but I want you to be doing uh, more low impact loading. Mm -hmm. So instead of your box jumps, your squats, all those things that you have been doing and you're running, I want you to maybe get some walking in there or just some um, swimming. In. And definitely avoid those crunches. Um, so while you're doing these exercises, I want you to do functional bracing. That's just basically making sure that you contract your pelvic floor and your transverse abdominis, just the way that I've talked to you earlier, when you're doing those exercises. So, um, but I'll give you a strengthening exercise that I can um, give you for your rad. So this will strengthen your abdominals here and help with your rad um, that you're experiencing at the moment. Yep. So what it is, so we're going to be using a mat here. Um, first of all, before we start, make sure that you, when you're doing this exercise, it's a plank by the way, um, I don't want you holding your breath. If you have any lower back pain, please stop. Um, and I don't want you twisting or turning or flexing when you're getting down onto the mat. Okay, cool. So what it is, first of all, I just want you on your forearms, on your knees, and I want you to hold that for 60 seconds. Don't arch your back or put, put your bottom up like that. Just make sure it's nice and straight. Um, I know you're quite fit, so I'll give you some progressions as well. So the next one is just going onto straight arms and holding that for 60 seconds as well. The next progression can be um, you straighten your legs, but you also put your arms flat on the floor. Yep. And then the hardest one is straight arms, straight legs. So we're all doing that for 60 seconds, and you're doing that three times with two minutes rest in between, and you'll be doing that two to three times per week. Okay. That makes sense? Yep. Okay, so did you want to try that now? Yep. Super fit. So no twisting. Awesome. Is that right? That's perfect. Yep, so the bottom's not too high. Perfect. I'm going to get you some um, to do some pelvic floor contractions as well and some exercises at home. So the first one I want you to do is a strengthening exercise. So this one will be um, the on-off contractions you were doing on the rear time ultrasound. Mm -hmm. So it's one second on, one second off. I want you to do three of them in crook lines. So that's your knees bent. Yep. And I want you to do three, um, so three reps and three sets. And in between those sets is two minute break. Okay. And I want you to do that as many times a day as you can. Um, the next one is more of an endurance. So do you remember when you were holding it for as long as you can? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what I remember that you could do um, three seconds in sideline, really good contraction that. Mm -hmm. So that's what I want you to do. I want you to hold that for three seconds, release, and then do that three times. So three reps for three seconds, three times a day, but no more than um, three times 
the base, so I don't want you to do it any time that you can. Right. Uh, the next one is more of a power, so this is the quick ones that you were doing. Yeah. Again, that one is in crook line, um, so I want you to do four of them, and yeah. I'm going to do really good um, four contraction sets, mm -hmm. um, and you're going to do three sets of them, and as many times as you can a day, um, and a two minute break in between those sets as well. And then the last one is basically just relaxing your pelvic floor. So that one is just taking 10 deep breaths in without thinking about your pelvic floor at all. Um, but I've got all the information, that's including your strengthening and your general exercise and the pelvic floor exercises just in this pamphlet. Uh, do you have any questions at all?